I don't know, man. I, I can't. I can't say C9 after today. I just can't. I just can't. I'm sorry. versus FlyQuest. Welcome back to the LCS waiting room. We have Raz, myself, Emily, and Sven. Once again, good to have you back. Good to be back. I'm excited for today. Yeah, and I was hoping for a longer day <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Four games, maybe five. Anything? <laughs> Any sign of life from Cloud9? Are they alive? It's like the poking the stick meme, like do something. <laughs> but are they back? Week one, they're back. <laughs> but okay, let's pull up the bracket just to see how we got to this spot before we talk about what happened to C9. Here's how the playoffs actually shook out. Remember, before playoffs, 100 Thieves was actually the number two seed going in. They got swept by Cloud9 in the first round, made us think Cloud9 was back. Then Cloud9 <laughs> did not win another game. They actually tricked us for the rest of playoffs. <laughs> yeah, they actually tricked, they us. tricked us. They actually tricked us. <laughs> and you made your entire what was it like your 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 entire report card based off that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. like I said, the report card doesn't lie. I was not a good student. They were not a good team. <laughs> oh, no! Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, get it all out. That was a punchline. <laughs> get it all out. <laughs> so, uh, what happened? We can spend a little bit of time at the top of the show since, you know, split long. We were saying Cloud9 was the super team. Well, we were talking in week one, even with Double Lift, I was like, what is it, like 50 50 that they win the whole thing? And it was like kind of hard to pick. Clearly, things did not go well for C9. So what what was some of their biggest issues, do you think? I mean, I think a lot of it is not even necessarily like, they obviously still have five very good individuals as a team. I think the thing is they just never had a lot of coordination or a unified idea on how they wanted to play the game as a team. And I think it specifically shows when you go up against a team like TL, who while their names might not be as impressive to people on paper, when they load into the game, I do get the sense that they all know exactly how they want to play together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it reminds me of, uh, actually Azale had an entire Telestrator segment based off the 100 Thieves series, where it's like, okay, perfect. like. Uh, Fudge has pushed in his lane. He's getting a ward down in the enemy top side jungle. Uh, the information that you're gathering from that blabber is able to use that, either steal Gromp and then maybe snowball that. Like everyone's kind of, every action is working alongside that. Like bot lane is recognizing that you're making them play top lane, they're playing safe. Like every aspect of their game felt like there was solid teamwork. Um, but then we didn't really see that. It was up and down. A remind, reminder of like just off of the break, week five or something, we saw that element of it. And it's just, it, it wasn't consistent enough. 
I agree. And I think team identity is the most important thing for these teams right now. Both FlyQuest and Teal know exactly who they are and who they aren't. Mm -hmm. They aren't playing things they aren't good at. Mm -hmm. They're only playing things they're good at. No, the win condition always, and they play towards it. I think C9, we all unanimously agreed they were the best team in the offseason. Mm -hmm. We thought they were going to sweep mm -hmm. everyone. Then we went 3 0, and we're like, yeah, they're just going to steamroll yeah. LCS. And then it just collapsed. And it felt like they never got back, in like mm -hmm. a better words. They never <laughs> actually found out what's their style, and they kept trying mm -hmm. different things, and it mm -hmm. just never worked. Yeah, I. Uh, I sprinted home yesterday and did a 30-minute podcast about this, so I'll try and give the cliff notes okay. really quickly so we can actually talk about the series. It relates a little bit to this <laughs> graph we have uh, that's been updated from yesterday, which is Cloud9 in every game that they weren't ahead in gold. So if they were even or behind at 15, they lost literally every game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So their mid-game was completely disjointed, and I think... Uh, this is more just a result of the symptoms, not some magic number of like, oh boy, they really need to be ahead. Uh, I think what ended up happening to this team is once they started struggling, they kept just doing that thing where you default back to playing what you're good at. Yeah. Let's play to our strengths. Yeah. But the strengths of the five individual players when combined together make a really poorly tasting meal. <laughs> like they just have the wrong ingredients. I haven't thought of, but like like bananas. I knew you were gonna go for my banana and eggs. eggs. Oh, Leave my God. banana and eggs. Out Maybe of it. some horseradish. I've never touched that. <laughs> it's just really bad ingredients. Even though individually on the right sandwiches or breakfast, they would could all be really good. Mm -hmm. And I think if they do end up keeping all five players together, if they you know go to Korea and boot camp to try and work on some of their mechanics and team fighting, mm -hmm. I think the really important thing is one or two players need to put significant time into playing differently. Mm -hmm. I think all these players are good enough that they can adjust their play style a little bit and still be near the top, but it's going to feel bad because those are players that are legitimately going to have to change their style if this team wants to reach their peak. That's just my opinion on that mm -hmm. for Cloud9. Yeah. I mean Great. <laughs> that sounds like a great. Hey, you surmise your entire yeah. podcast really well in that one. Yeah, no need to watch seconds. those 30 minutes of JLXP. Yeah. Don't watch it, guys. <laughs> also, we're on the finals today. Uh, Fan Fest is happening outdoors as well. There's a lot of really cool stuff happening out there. There's a bunch of booths. We got Kia out there. We got a champ. Uh, I know Freak and August were out there doing a Q&A earlier. They're doing some live dive stuff out there as well. It's... It's a good time, actually. Hunter Thieves is all oh. there. Oh. All their coaches were there here, too, as well. Okay. Usually, after you lose, you just scatter like the Dragon Ball. But I've actually been seeing a lot of activations yeah. from teams. Like, even NRG was doing, like, an, uh, um, like a party of just watching the games just yesterday. So, yeah, watch it's, party. It's, uh, it's all presented by AT&T as well. So, it's really cool that they're able to bring this fan fest to the LCS. And I also really... I know Sven and I just like casually strolled past it this morning. Yeah. I really like the fans that show up this early with this level of dedication because they're the ones that have, they go all the way back, right? They're just like, Sven, I loved your time on TSM. I was like, yeah, I didn't like it so much, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we just always, I feel like, have really good interactions with the fans that show up to, yeah. to all of our pre-shows. Uh, onto the series today. We have some LCS players with the most consecutive days on their teams yes. all time. And there's one player that is active today in Core JJ, who I think has become a symbol of the LCS. But speaking of the longtime history, what stands out to you guys about this list? I know we had it yesterday as well. Yeah, for me, it was actually, well, the, the side one was the fact that Wild Turtle's is, is legacy was mostly on FlyQuest, and I, I tend to forget that a lot <laughs> of times. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I forget about that a lot. Um, but a lot of it, for, for me, was CoreJJ, and, and mm -hmm. elements of C9 as well. And I think it's a good lesson for teams whenever you're trying to build your roster not to start from scratch and to start with, like, really core, um, okay, my bad, core, <laughs> core elements on the team that set the culture, that are your best players, and that they can actually build up players that come along them so in this case I thought core JJ now he's ready to like trying to win his next championship it was a great decision from team liquid my two takeaways one as we touched upon yesterday where's Sven yeah. apparently uh, yeah his uh, academy time broke yeah, the streak I'm broke sorry the, broke the LCS That's streak broke. they doubled down too because they could have added it going into today <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Guy hates like, me. No. <laughs> what can I say and his name um, is but the other thing <laughs> that we kind of also touched upon is how um, Team Liquid in this case, they've obviously stuck with Core as 
the face of the org, kind of the person they're going to build around. But they've also stuck with Jan for a while. In that graphic of the active players, it obviously doesn't cover his academy time, but he did come up from TLA. And I think um, it makes me happy to see orgs actually sticking with their players even when they do make mistakes because I think the teams that do end up winning a lot of the time in recent history, in recent LCS history anyway, are rosters that are given the grace to actually make mistakes and improve mm -hmm. from that, like NRG, who we also saw the Dokla contracts kind of Palavox trifecta on there as well. Yeah, I think one thing underrated about it is that there's no lower tier teams on this list. There was mm -hmm. one player from Shopify and one from Dignitas. Mm -hmm. And they were both in the like lowest played days of everyone else. And it just shows that changing your whole roster every single year isn't how you win LCS if you're a lower tier team. Mm -hmm. The building around you know one player might just be better for you. Instead of changing the whole thing, like, all right, we didn't win LCS, well, just <laughs> blow the whole thing up. And yeah. find your players, and then they don't win? Oh, well, go again. Blow the whole thing up again. What's funny about this? Get five randoms. What's funny about this is FlyQuest. Because they switched five they players and they're, they did, yeah. they're waiting in finals. Speaking of which, we got a bit of FlyQuest history here and how close they have actually come to winning the championship. So these are the five players they have playing for them this weekend. Here's uh, the first time, not the first time, one of the more recent times they finished second, I believe, uh, as we're hopping around. In 2020, they finished second twice during the COVID years. Easy to forget that. Awesome. And we also had the 23 roster that felt like they were going to win the whole thing about four weeks into spring, fell short, fell even more short, and we'll see what happens in 24 spring. And it's been a heartbreak for FlyQuest throughout their history because, as you mentioned, people will oftentimes forget, like, those COVID years of 2020, 2021, when they were actually a really competitive roster uh, with Power of Evil, Santorin, Solo, like, Ignar yeah. and Wild Turtle. Those, that team was incredibly strong, and then they actually paid heavily to be able to get a team like Prince, Vikla, Impact, and all that. And then they actually didn't perform whatsoever going into summer. So it, just looking at the current team, the current team that has honestly been the most successful FlyQuest has been, getting first place during the regular season, and then now being in the finals today, this is where they've come from. This is so funny seeing like middle school turn 15, while yeah. two of them were like, <laughs> I was like Jensen wait, was like, at Worlds while his teammates were like turning 15. <laughs> he really was. Also, yeah, he was, was Lucio yeah. also not in like high school? I'm pretty sure yeah, he apparently was. he just turned 15. Yeah, no, he just turned 15. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah, enough to okay. I mean, really wild to see that set of timelines for FlyQuest because all of these players, in a sense, have not like bounced around a whole bit, but they've all been on their own unique journeys. And and one of those that I didn't completely know about, uh, I talked to Papa Smith last week after his games, and he talked to me about how he originally scouted Busio back when he was 17. Take a look. You know, Alan was someone who, when we were scouting for our 2021 amateur team, 100 Thieves Next, at that time we were going through some coaching changes, so actually I was scouting, and I looked at Busio's mid lane play, and this was around the time Doyen B was doing really uh -huh. well, and I was like, this guy from mid lane is timing everyone in the game's summoners in his solo queue games, mm. and it's like really precise, it clicks, like, what if he could be a support? And that was like, just me solo, throwing out a hope and a prayer, uh -huh. and brought the idea to him and he was like, oh, but I'm a mid laner, isn't support for bad players? How old was he then? He was 17 okay. at that time. Um, and definitely still in the mindset that like supports were, you know, beholden to other people and couldn't contribute much. Yeah. And I was like, have you heard of Carrier? And he was like, no. I'm like, you should look up this kid Carrier. Like he's pretty yeah. good. I think you could be like something like him. So it's from a, like a humble chat with a 17 year old kid, like four years ago to now, he's come a long, long way. <laughs> You should look up this kid, Gary, <laughs> because my favorite part of that. But um, don't forget, Busio did make his debut playing Azir support. Obviously, it did not work out. That was against me. Uh, uh -oh. but <laughs> that's my hammerdinger. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a matchup. <laughs> at the beginning of this split, I did like he brought out the Nico support. Um, I, I think I was like you know, nudging him in uh, Hotline League chat, whether he would take bring out the Rumble support since we've seen it be so successful elsewhere. Um, so I do think that is something that if FlyQuest want to lean into, it is kind of a cool facet of Busio's play that they can bring out when they want. Yeah, and I love the fact that in this year, he has been a lot more free to be vocal for his within his lane. Mm -hmm. I know just like he has mentioned when he was on um, 100 Thieves, of course, you have a lot of veterans on the team, a lot of loud, louder voices. So like, and also his rookie year, so you're just kind of like learning and not doing what you did when he was in Academy, 
which was he was a vocal shot caller and he was as creative as possible. He was playing Camille support. He was playing all these types of supports that he kind of needed to like uh, t tame down when he was playing against tougher competition. So I love the fact that he's on that next step of his own development. Mm -hmm. uh, and he hit first team all pro. So, I mean, that's kind of a, an, a crazy curve to have. Yeah. And it's going to be really interesting watching him play Core JJ this weekend, yeah. who has been chasing his next LCS title for a really long time. He mentioned yesterday, uh, even in the interview with Zven and I, that he wants to win LCS kind of more than ever. Because mm -hmm. when he arrived in LCS, he did win back-to-back -back LCS titles just right away. He joined a team that was already champions. He helped to win two more along with Jensen and Doublelift and that squad. Oh. And then in 2020, when he was still on Team Liquid, finished third in summer. In 21, two second places, two finals losses, one to Sven. Uh, <laughs> I didn't five. say anything. <laughs> <laughs> and then one 3-0 loss. Then Ooh. they brought their version of the super team. Best they finished was third place. Last year, it looked dark for a long time. They rallied towards the end, bringing an APA. Again, the best they did was third place. And now it's second is the worst they can do or the championship. So even after winning the two splits, he, every year he's had at least a third place or higher finish, but actually hasn't been able to win that LCS championship in five years. And it's something that he yeah. knows. He like, I'm sure beats himself up with because he talks about it whenever the conversation uh, comes All out. the time. Yes, about not being able to win a championship for how long. And it feels like every year that comes by, the criticisms of like his current play mm -hmm. and the fact that he hasn't been able to win without double it, blah, 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 all this stuff come, like gets louder and louder. Yep. I feel like it's been the loudest this split. So the fact that he's now gotten second place and has a chance to like quiet that down and win a championship is crazy to me. Let's take a look at their entire roster timeline because we know what quarter is going to look like <laughs> since 2018. It's going to be a lot of team liquid. Yeah, <laughs> look at Let's that. take a look at the rest of the team. A random Gen G in there. <laughs> yeah. Champion, yeah. Another it, high school and turned 16 as well. Yeah. One, one guy was winning worlds, the other guy was in high school and uh, turned 16. I also love how if you extended both impacts and core, they would just yeah. go off the entire chart. Years. Yeah, it's like while Yon and APA are turning like, yeah, 10 years old, 11 years old. If APA was 16 in 2018, impact won worlds when he was like 11. Yeah. It's true. It's so insane. That's so crazy. Yeah. yeah, he had a message somewhere. I saw it yesterday. I don't did he, I don't know if he tweeted this or he posted it somewhere, but he talked about how like uh, him and Core JJ are like mom and dad for the rest of the team. Oh, oh right. yeah, I don't know that was Yeah, but I mean, I do think the impact in Core JJ being reunited, the two that won the 2019 back-to-back -back titles, and then uh, we're still together towards the tail end of 2020, do a lot on the map, and I think we're kind of seeing that. With the, with the team now. Another thing that we saw throughout the playoffs is the pace at which Team Liquid has been playing. And we have a rematch of the series that gave us the most kills ever in an LCS playoff series by 44. <laughs> That's yeah, hilarious. Right? It's also, <laughs> That's I believe, second worldwide to an Invictus gaming game. I forget which one. But that, that's console? at like 207 kills, and this one's at 205. Well, was that 100 Thieves series? Four games, not five? Ooh, I can't remember. I think it was. Yeah. I think that 100 Thieves series didn't even go five, and it's still the fifth most all time. Wow. That's how crazy some of their games have been. And just hearing from Spawn just yesterday, we were just talking about like, yeah, I mean, on stage during the regular season, we were playing like an NACL team, but in scrims, we were playing like, like an LPL team. It yeah. was just that frustration of being able to get that out on stage, and they've been doing it during playoffs, so it's been nice to see. Uh, Raz, I know you've been in chat. Yes. Have you used the new emotes? I haven't. Well, you I haven't, haven't used the emotes? No, but uh, the people out there have been. They've been using Yappa a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <They've actually been laughs> so, so this was originally your idea. You didn't do the execution, but there are new emotes in chat. I don't know how you actually get, you're the master, how do you get these? Oh, so they're all just like, I forget which uh, one it was between 7TV, but it's one of the actual, so it is 7TV. 7 7TV, 7 yeah, okay. 7TV emotes that are out there. So if you're in the chat right now, if you Those see APA typing, that's a Yappa. If you see yeah. a, a solo kill top lane, that's a Giga Chad there up for uh, impact. Yeah. So there's a lot of emotes that are out there. Please abuse them. I already see people out abusing them. We right need now. to see a lot more of those in yeah. chat. Hell yes. Yeah. So a body <laughs> by Jensen great. immediately from yeah. Alamar. So it's in there. Nice. Okay. So last week on Pros, uh, Inspire talked about how good FlyQuest is at putting enemy blood leaders in the dirt. People were flaming APA for our series. Now they're flaming JoJo. I think uh, we are just good at like abusing players that want to play the game. And I feel like. Ooh. 
A when APA was playing, in my opinion, his teammates were just not playing well around him and not helping him. And today I feel like Jojo was trying to win the game, but his teammates were not trying to win the game with him. And it looks like he's inting. And people are gonna. I've been a victim of this. People, people <laughs> say that APA was inting. Now they say Jojo was inting. In my opinion, I'm just seeing plays and I'm going to to kill an enemy millionaire that is trying to play the game. If an enemy team don't help him, then he will die. I agree with Inspired. I think they are really good at playing around enemy mid laners. I'm actually just going to take you through a little bit of Inspired's early jungle pathing from their game against uh, C9 last week. I thought this was really, really good from him. He actually essentially does the top side start where he backs for Longsword, comes down, is going to be clearing out this quadrant of the jungle. Meanwhile, J Jensen actually is getting shoved in by Jojo Pion. So we're going to see a few small things that in uh, Inspired really does recognizing where his lanes are at. He's also been really vocal about talking about how Jensen and him are really good at knowing like when he needs to come. So here he's going to cross mid. He's going to end up actually wrapping around starting off scuttle, but this uh, importantly allows Jensen to get this back, right? Because Jojo knows that Inspired is here. So if he goes forward, Jensen is, and Jensen and Inspired can go in on him. So that back is really important. Now back in this bot lane, this, what happens here is not great for Inspired and FlyQuest. C9 are going to end up very quickly getting a double kill in this bot lane on the bot side of the map um, when FlyQuest are trying to reset. And so obviously Inspired up top side, he's actually going to technically prepare to back, but he's going to end up canceling his back, immediately going down on bot side. Busio is also going to die down here. And the next most important thing is he immediately recognizes that he has a window during their reset to be able to do Drake because of how low Berserker and Vulcan both are. And this is actually massive for FlyQuest. So not only did he help set Jensen to get a better reset, mid lane is in a pretty stable position, but this absolutely ruins what C9 want to do on this bot side with this Callista Renata lane, right? Like they're supposed to be able to shove in, they're supposed to have kill pressure, which we just saw, but they're also supposed to lead to Drake control. And I thought this is a really good, mm. like small things that he does to really help set up FlyQuest for success. And also just in the moment recognizing like, okay, obviously my bot lane got 2v2 killed. Yeah. Not the best situation, <laughs> but this is how we can redeem it. And it actually ended up making a huge difference in this game. And to continue the inspired glaze Wait, session. Wait, you like the- No, <laughs> actually I don't even need it. Oh, you don't even need it? I don't it. even the need pointer? it. Okay. Honestly, honestly, if we could just throw up uh, the collage because I was inspired by your collage of just yesterday. I wanted to throw it up myself. So now if it is up here, it would be good. Oh, yeah, okay, just hold for live. I just got to be able to showcase. There it is, perfect. Beautiful. So you guys can see it if it's just blown up um, for yourselves. But the first thing is mostly just talking about Inspired's traps. He talked about it himself and how he just doesn't let players, especially mid laners, play the game. And for me, the things that come to mind are just how he traps on side lanes. So especially this game, he just bullies JoJo for the most part. <laughs> Constantly. In the same game, by the way. And it's not just specific to JoJo in these games where he's just like not letting him play on side, basically setting up a trap where he's just sitting up in the top side of the map. And if the solo, if the mid laner comes up top to clear the wave and he even takes one step further, he is going to die in those traps. So it's not just that, but he also just did it towards uh, Team Liquid. So now of course the, the images for me are too small to be able to say what the actual numbers are. But in this case, this was the Team Liquid game where they actually just made a fast trap in looking towards top lane pick because they knew that there wasn't any wards uh, in the top side of the map. So they ended up making a trap towards, uh, in this case it was impact. And they did it against um, APA. And if we just continue on, because this one's very specific on him being able to play through side lanes. But if we look towards the next layer of screenshots, it's just him bullying mid lane. It's the play that they actually ended up making towards uh, um, JoJo just in the mid side of the map. But also if you look towards the bot side here, uh, these two plays, it's him going through the lane and then picking up APA, uh, just walking past the lane as a vibe. So what's the lesson that you take away from this? A, 
Be very wary of side lanes. Inspired is going to be looking to trap there. Every team is really well prepped on this. They talk about how well FlyQuest plays through side lane, how they try and make a quick play. And if it does, then they have a really good tempo to be able to set up vision for the next objective. So that's one thing. Another thing is just how annoying he is through mid lane. Actually, my favorite one versus JoJo, when they saw his Talia go to bot lane, couldn't really make a play happen, then puts, tries to pick up the wave mid lane, he just waits in fog just to see if he ends up picking, like not taking the long way around and then gets the kill. So the players are talking about it. The coaches are talking about it. Inspired will be on a side lane. Uh, that's the only thing. I, that's the biggest takeaway for me. So why do you think Inspired is the greatest player of all time? <laughs> I mean, now that we're all glazing him, <laughs> might, might as well keep going, right? So, yes. Inspired when he plays Vi is always very active on side lanes. FlyQuest is also a team that when they're behind, they don't go, go down without a fight. Mm. And that's because of Inspired. He's always like, rather lose by swinging than just... We're waiting to lose, right? And I think Inspired generally tends to hide in silent bushes. That's always his comeback play. Yeah. This is how he's always been playing, even last year in EG, well, two years ago, whatever yeah. it was. He was always playing like this as well. We always had a presentation. Inspired will be in the bush, no <laughs> matter what. If you can't see him, he's there. So I don't think that TL will be caught off guard by it today. Yeah. Unless he's playing Vi, then it's like, the Vi Talia has so much range, right, with the ulti. I think it's just his, his style. He's very good at dragging people to his place, you know, dragging Boozy to his place, telling Masu just play safe mid, mm -hmm. make a silent play. That's sort of a very common we're behind play. It's when you can't contest mid 3-3 three, three, or 4-4, four, four, you just go silent and make yeah. a quick play. Yeah, and I think this is the reason why he is first team all pro, like why I think he is just the best jungler in the league. Because even in games in which they're behind in gold, like when they're significantly got behind in gold, in fact, we saw this in, uh, I think, game three of their last series, where it's like, okay, like, We'll just sit in the bush, hopefully, like, waiting for an event, <laughs> see if we can make a play happen. Um, I think their team fighting is really good because of Inspired, and I think the way they play side lanes is, is also really good because of Inspired. Yeah. I think Bobo as well. Yeah. yeah. Gotta see how they play. Bobo always wants to fight as creates well. Creates a lot of space on both Gragas and Renekton as well, giving yeah. his carry space to do their thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to see him match up against Umpty, because Umpty was even though he didn't win player of the series yesterday, very well could have. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was a big jungle gap in the series yesterday, so that'll be fun. But we are gonna be headed to a break. When we come back, we'll be celebrating this split's Kia MVP. So don't go anywhere. At mid lane, Faco. We're rolling into LCS Finals, see you there.
crazy to see how Quid developed to go from someone that people were saying, does he even deserve a spot on a team to does he deserve to be the MVP is a crazy change in conversation and narrative. Quid making his entrance here with the Weaver's wall gets Jojo stuck on the right side of it. Now tries to jump right back up the unraveled earth. Akali ain't getting out of that one, baby. Quid picking up a kill. Quid gets onto the back line. The Akali just wrecking the health bar of the Hui. Quid looking to turn this round, does catch Vulcan in there and clear the wave. The soldiers will take out Tomo. Quid is having a great game. Perfect timing from Quid on the Emperor's Divide. Quid with the flash, but MPA. Oh, Zazel trying to get out, but Quid is not going to allow it. They just bulldoze him. Now our male is looking for Quid, trying to catch him off of that spare rush timer. But it doesn't matter, he's still living! Quid is popping off! Quid, you're so good. M MVP. Woo! Quid, are you kidding me? What a miracle! All right, everyone joining me in wishing Quid congratulations on winning Kia MVP. Thank you. And here to present our award is Brad from Kia. Thank you. On behalf of Kia, we're excited to join the LCS community in uh, presenting you this Kia MVP award. <laughs> um, so obviously, you had a rough start to your LCS career. What changed going into this year, and how did you improve so much so quickly? Uh, to be honest, I didn't get changed that much, and I just used to using English and feel more comfortable in stage. I think that's it. Okay. Uh, and then, obviously, you tweeted this out a little bit, but you basically said, win MVP after losing in playoff XD. Uh, so I just wanted to know, going forward, what are your goals for next split for you and 100 Thieves? Uh, when i watching other teams, they look, they play like more, uh, they play like a team more than us, so our goal should be more be cons consistently, uh, consistently, mm -hmm. and be be uh, play as a team. Yeah, I think that could be our next. That should be our next goal. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Quid. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Shikahel. Thank you. This stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy or other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm closing my eyes. Oh, yeah, check it out here. Here's Quest arriving earlier today. Inspired in Whippo, the, uh, definitely the ego of the team. Mm. Arriving early. Really? I mean, you heard them last week on Pros. <laughs> they were talking all kinds of all kinds of smack, but they've been backing it up. They've literally been backing it up all split long. Yeah, I love the confidence they exude as a team. Now you're seeing, of course, Team Liquid come through. It's interesting listening from Spawn's perspective of how much he was like, yeah, we should be in the finals. <laughs> <laughs> the confidence that he has while everyone else has been doubting that he is like, no, like, a lot of the changes that we've made to the team has been like really positive. The, the hard workers from the, the younger players and also like people underestimating the impact that impact had on the team. 
I tried not to do double this. impact. I really, First I, the I'm core of into it. Team Liquid yeah. is for you today, and now this. It's my yeah, limited wow. vocabulary. It's, really? <laughs> it's <all> limited. <laughs> One fun fact about today as well: Whippo spent some time on Team Liquid uh, Impact. Spent some time on FlyQuest. Who requested this? I did. I did. It was I didn't think there'd be this good at Photoshop. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the main point was the fact that both of these players really did make that swap. Uh, and it's pretty insane. You never really see that where, at least in Impact's case, like he just came off of the FlyQuest team. And like, yes, a lot of hardship in that respect, but it, you never really see it. And it's pretty crazy. The imp Like, the, okay, I'm stopping myself. Limited the vocabulary. Influence. The, impact the impact. influence. I like yeah. that one. Uh, that both these players are having on their team. First team All-Pro on one side and second team All-Pro on the other. And also Impact has a chance to win his sixth LCS title today. Yes. He's yep. won four on Team Liquid, one on EG, and could be his fifth one on Team Liquid. When does that enter him into the conversation for best LCS player of all time? Ooh. Or do, uh, does it? Are we already there? Because I feel like everyone is always like double lift in Bjergsen, but like Impact has been so consistently good for so long on multiple rosters. I mean, do, do you think he's there or? I think he should be a part of the conversation. Okay. Part of the conversation for sure, but I think it will take a little bit more time. And I think accolades just was one part piece of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because from everyone's perspective, everyone's going to be talking about Doublelift and Bjergsen. Impact, for sure, throughout his career was always, anytime you talk to any of these players that have worked with him in the past, they talk about the influence that he's had in a lot of their team environments. Even just listening to him, he's like, nothing is never enough. He, even if he has like an amazing game, it's like, no, I played, I played bad. <laughs> and a lot of that really makes the teams improve so tremendously. So I think he should be a part of the conversation, but it's going to take some time. Yeah, I've had the pleasure of playing as either against or with every player on this list. And I can say Impact has always been rock solid in top lane. Mm -hmm. He almost never is the reason his team loses and he's always dependable. Whether it's a weak side um, tank player or a Brewster like yesterday with Xante, they ranked on his Rumble as well. He's so good on all those champs. So mm -hmm. he really is just the, the meaning of dependent you know he yeah. always rely on this guy he's so reliable and never it fails and yeah. he's also he's added a few things to his game over the years as well because i remember uh when i was with impact in 2020 uh, we had kane as the as the strategic coach and he'd always be putting him on weak side duty it was just like <laughs> if we could put him on orn we we would just because he was solid enough that he'd always be able to win that um but then when he went to eg he definitely started playing a lot more like ability to play strong side with Renekton, it became a perma ban against him. That wasn't the case in 2020. Yeah, we saw yesterday, as you mentioned, his rumble is is top mm -hmm. tier still after all these years. So just an incredibly reliable, hardworking, legendary top laner. Even in the pros episode, both JoJo and Inspired were ganging up on him. It was like, why did you leave? If, if, you, if you stayed, <laughs> just business. <laughs> we yeah, we went on the championship exactly. So there's a lot of respect that goes to his name. Yeah, and Whippo is another player who in this top lane matchup is really having a lot to potentially win off of this, both personally and due to his legacy. And Raz, you actually sat down with Whippo like very recently in this week's MasterCard Player of the Week interview. What's up, guys? Another Player of the Week interview with Whippo. Congratulations on the win. Thank you very much. Now, have you... Seen this game before? No, no, actually, no, I haven't. <laughs> okay, perfect. I mean, basically, you have 90 seconds to answer mm -hmm. uh, questions. Uh, you, if you don't want to answer it or if you can't think of an answer, you okay. can skip them and go next. Uh, first thing first, of course, just to, as an introduction, you're an eight-time All-Pro. Uh, second time MSI appearance, this is including now. Uh, four times World Qualifier and, of course, a two times LEC champion. And you have a chance to win an LCS championship yeah. today. Uh, first question, I mean, like, you're going up against Team Liquid. Just yeah. thoughts on the matchup today. Uh, couldn't have been a better opponent for me. Uh, obviously, I played on Team Liquid and I was not as successful as right now. Uh, additionally, I think playing against Impact is probably the single best opponent you could wish for if you wanted uh, a championship you could brag about. Yeah. You know, uh, I think everyone respects Impact a lot as a top laner, and the fact that I get to face Impact means that if I manage to win this finals, there will be no one doubting that I'm the real deal. I love that answer. And now let's get straight into the game. Are you ready? I'm ready. Sweet. Three, two, one. One, go. Best top laner you faced? Ben. Which player do you watch the most? Just admiring, maybe you're watching. Oh, it, mm -hmm. It's like Baus or Tyler One, I think. Okay, that's a good answer, actually. I did not expect that one. <laughs> Biggest lesson you've learned pre-Fanatic before that? 
See, this is one where it's maybe too much thinking. Free pass. Yeah. yeah. Pass. I mean, okay, that's a perfect. hard one. Uh, favorite moment in your career? Uh, World Finals 2018. Favorite teammate you've played with? Ooh. Hillisang. There we go. How many languages can you speak? Two. Two? Okay. Wait, what, what are the two? Dutch and English. Where does the name Whippo come from? Uh, it used to be my pet cat called Pippo, and Pippo was taken when I tried to make World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft characters, so Whippo. Nice. <laughs> Someone who doesn't get the credit they deserve that you feel like? Mm, Masu. What are you most proud of with this FlyQuest team? Our resilience. Biggest pet peeve on any team environment that just grinds your gears? Mm, refuse to win. Don't want to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Brings you the most joy in a league game. Because I see you laughing every time you're playing the game, so. Just fighting, like a PvP game. I think League of Legends PvP game, so you should PvP. Last question would be, a fly teammate that wouldn't survive long in a deserted island that you just have currently? Uh, Jensen, I guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why Jensen? I don't know, I just... Like, I'm thinking, like, Masu is fasting for Ramadan, so, you know, mm -hmm. huge respect to him. Obviously, would do fine. Uh, better than most of us, actually. Um, Inspired seems a bit, like, too witty, like, too, mm -hmm. quick on his feet. I, I guess it would be me or Jensen. Okay. Like, Busio's, like, really get, like, like he, he's really well put together as a person, so yeah. I, I feel like he would... Makes sense to me. He would do a good job. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it was me or Jensen, so I, I threw him under the bus. Love it. <laughs> Hoist that trophy. This might now be the last trophy you'd be hoisting today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we take those. Uh, it, it's nice. Um, mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Love to see Whippo uh, in good spirits before this finals. Three wins away from the LCS championship. Looking at the other side, though, Team Liquid and their growth throughout the split. I remember in the first three weeks, many of us were calling them the most boring team in the league. <laughs> that is true. That's not the case anymore. So what you see on this graph here is their combined kills per minute week over week and actually playoff series by playoff series because playoff two and playoff three are in the same week compared to the league average. So basically they played those first three weeks. After that, they tried to get a little bit more aggressive. When playoffs started, they really did set a couple records having two of the five bloodiest series of all time in LCS playoff history with the 1.17 and the 1.18. And even yesterday, when they were stomping C9, they were still right at that league average. So Team Liquid, a much more aggressive team throughout the year. And I'm blaming C9 for that one. They let the door straight open. So I feel like they would have been a lot more bloodier if the team met them. <laughs> they can't stop catching strays yeah, everywhere they go. Wow. Like, no <laughs> matter what they do. What do you think you would attribute most of this TL aggressiveness increase to? Omti. Okay. Well, no, I think I can't remember Team Liquid solo killing anyone. Impact on that a couple times here and there. It's happened, I remember it, but like, mm -hmm. sorry, I guess I can't remember it after all. Um, but Umti is involved in every play this team makes. It feels like early game ganks, invades, he's always active in the jungle, like Emily said yesterday. He's just the most active jungler by far mm -hmm. in the early game. Yeah, I think for me, it's not just Umti himself, because I feel like we still saw him doing a lot of the same things in season. It's mm -hmm. just that he seems much more well coordinated with his team. It just works lanes. more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In terms of, uh, yeah, it just works more. Yeah. They just want to win more, forehead. Uh, but no, I, I do think like it speaks to kind of the coordination and improvement we've been talking about from this TL team at, uh, all throughout playoffs. So not only their team fighting, but again, like when Umti is invading, it seems a lot more conscientious of what the rest of his team is doing and they're available to back him up if need be. Yeah, and he has a Robin and Core JJ. I, I feel like if you look at the support to jungle proximity, really high between the two of them and they work as a pair. So if they look for a, if they look for a fight, if they're setting up for vision around Dragon or something like that, these are the two guys that definitely want to take a fight. They've been first picking Nautilus throughout mm -hmm. the later portions of the regular season. So it's like, it's something that they've aimed for, have tried to force, and it's been working. Yeah, and for me, it's the fact that they're picking the tools that allow them to start fights. Yes. Like if they're playing Volibear and Nautilus, both those champions are very able to CC a target for the rest of the people to show up. But then we've even heard it from Umpty. They're just trying to annoy the other team as much as possible <laughs> to make them fight because they're yep. playing in such a way with pretty good macro and they keep their tempo up that if the other team doesn't fight them, they're going to lose anyway. Not because the they're <laughs> stealing Gromp, they're stealing Blue Buff, they're taking every objective, they're you know, harassing them under turret. So it's just this attitude that I think they have as well as just executing at a higher level that's allowed them to play this really aggressive game. Another matchup that I think is really big for this series, Ven, is Yan versus Masu. Yeah. Because to me, Yan 
has been playing great during playoffs. He's always been someone who's really willing to put in the work. He just absolutely has been spamming the game for the last five years straight. Mm -hmm. I think we're starting to see some of the fruits of that labor pay off, but we're also going up against Masu. What do you think of this? I think it's fair to say that FlyQuest ball has been the weak part of their team, the weak link is at least. I think that they had a very bad laning phase, especially C9 in the last show off. The Karma Senna game against uh, Cosmonaut, they got t killed three times in lane 2v2, which you can't get away with against better teams. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that needs to get under control. I think Jan has been really good in the Callista versus Bars matchup. And I think if FlyQuest has blue side, which I believe they have um, in the first game here, they should try to ban one and pick the other. Get Jan away from his comfort picks and try to put him on the back foot. Play, make him play something like Senna or perhaps Smolder if he comes back and just make him not as comfortable as he's been the whole playoffs because he's been so good for TL. What's going to be tough is the fact that Team Liquid just, they played a dominate lane. They also put draft resources like the Zyrus pick, pick yep. for Core JJ that they will look for a counter pick. They'll make the laning phase really difficult. They'll call in yeah. uh, umpty for a dive if possible. That's just the most like obnoxious thing to play against. Yeah, and I think a lot of times when we were talking to teams behind the scene, they did cite this TL bot lane as the bot lane like they absolutely yeah. did not want to go up against because mm. they were that good and they were that annoying. Yeah. The thing that's really interesting to me about this matchup is Yon coming in, we kind of recognized even all the way back when he came in from TLA last year, he his leaning was was good, right? Like that was his strength in Academy, but it was his team fighting that needed work. And I think that's where we've seen the most improvement out of him, especially the way that TL has been playing around these team fights on the comfort picks that Sven mentioned. By contrast, I think where you're looking for Masu to really shine is in team fights. That mm, was yeah. his strength previously. Um in Academy as well. And then coming up this year, I think it's been that laning phase that we're looking for a little bit more out of him. I feel like Masu's had a very good rookie split, but even in his own words, he's trying to figure out what is preventing him from playing the way he knows he can play. Yeah. There is still something either mental that is happening on stage for him or just with the, the way he's performing that is at least holding him back in laning phase. I think he's come back in a lot of team fights. And Sven, you mentioned yesterday, actually, do you, do you think the TL bot lane is the best bot lane in the LCS? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair to say. I think that it's sometimes hard for a rookie like Master to come into a team with so much, well, ego perhaps, you, you could say, or so much, such a big voice everywhere else that, you know, sometimes people get drawn to people with voices like Big Bo and Inspired. So yeah. often they're making the place they think is good. Yes. And they kind of just forget about their Master guy in the ball and they're like, yeah, you'll just deal with it on your own, right? You'll be fine with team fights, right? Yeah. And it, it works for them, right? So I think there's no reason to change anything. Another part of the Team Liquid bot lane is Core JJ. Yeah. Obviously, we've talked a lot about Yawn. And. He has many, many accolades throughout the years. Yes. But as he's mentioned, he really wants to win the LCS now more than ever because with all of these things that you see here. Not bad. So middle left, two LCS titles, 2019 spring and summer. So 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. It's been a long no time. Titles. And it gets in your head. If you haven't, if you've been so close to being able to achieve that again and it just keeps escaping you, it's something that you ask yourself, like, what do I need to do to win? Like, every time, at least he's had, at least he's felt, like, stacked teams to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And th it's always kind of just escaped his grasp. I know this is the split where people started to doubt just because it's like, okay, you have really new players on your roster. Like, surely this is not the year. This is a growing year. And immediately they're in the final. So it comes when you least expect it. <laughs> yeah, I think the last couple of years we've been criticizing Corey J for not being as good as he used to be. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I think there's no doubt that this... This split so far, Koji is back. Yeah. He's so back. There's this, they were rehearsing the opening ceremony earlier. <laughs> and th we didn't even have Core JJ and Busio there, but I was hearing them announce, like, in the, you know, support position, Busio and Core JJ. And, like, a couple weeks ago, Busio got, like, 75% of the first team all pro votes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm, like, I'm looking at that matchup, and I'm a little biased because I saw Core JJ up close, <laughs> you know, four years ago. But I'm, like, yeah, I'm going to take Core JJ in that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in, in this yeah. moment. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just because I feel like he has a bit of that aura back also, after what we've seen during playoffs. The playoff are just different. Yes. Yeah. I think the big thing for me, too, is to speak to both of your points, Sven and Jet, is that, again, like we talked about, Raz, you talked about how they started first picking Nautilus. I feel like we've seen him roaming a lot more outside of that lane. So we talk about how good they are at laning, which is true. Yeah. But again, I think the big thing that Core can do on the map better than no one else when he is on those timers mm. is like ganking mid, 
covering mm -hmm. resources, covering umti if he needs to on yeah. jungle invades, right? And that's been another difference in how TL have played throughout playoffs. Yeah, and the change of pace that they've played that we've talked about a little earlier, I think really lends a hand in that. Because when I see Core JJ at his best, it's because he's just looking for any fight. Mm -hmm. He is just bloodthirsty for any engage. And so we saw that during the playoffs. So even though during the regular season, I still I still think those questions were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Playoffs, as you mentioned, just a different beast. He's been insane. Just even uh, yesterday's series where he found that hex flash around mid lane yep. and then yeah, just to get good. the hook and then the hook that, that followed really that cool. up. It's insane yeah. how well he is playing in these playoffs and that it feels like he's online. If that core JJ shows up today, <laughs> it may be another game five. Like, it may, they for sure, I think, will win this series if he is at the same level, if Umpty's playing at the same level, if there is that consistency. That's why FlyQuest... I think they were more scared of Team Liquid than they were of Cloud9. And I think one thing to track for the people in the crowd, we might not be able to hear it on stream, when Team Liquid's winning fights is Core JJ's volume. True. Yeah. We'll be able it's to so hear funny. him. He's calling out who doesn't have flash. He's calling out when he lands the hook. So yeah. we're going to see how that works. Another player we need to keep track of, though, is Jensen, because he is another player with a ridiculous resume, mm -hmm. took the tiniest dip in 2023, but it looks like he's back in form. A little yes. stint on Dignitas. Yep. <laughs> It's so weird when I hear people talk about Jensen because I feel like he, for so long in the LCS and in the eyes of the LCS community specifically, kind of lived in the shadow of Bjergsen when he has been. Yeah. Like, if you look at his accolades, if you look at the fact that last year was the first time in his career since starting for C9 in 2015 that he even missed an international tournament, mm -hmm. to have that kind of consistency on top-level teams in LCS is insane. It's just wild also, as you can see, the international appearances that he's had throughout his career. Like, he has been that guy. He's been the glue on teams. They all f oftentimes referenced him when he was on Cloud9 of how they went to an international. I think, like, it shows how well he can perform when he's given the chance. People don't even know that he was, like, second in all uh, of um, Pog votes just of the regular season. Yeah. And then what was crazy to me, the fact that he had one player of the series, but not player of the week. A lot of the times it just feels like he is <laughs> kind of undervalued and undersold throughout his career. And it, I feel like this is another year where he can win a championship and really continue to prove himself. How incredible is it that aside from last year, yeah. he was just 2023 20, away from going to 10 years of international events in a row? Because he was his first Nuts. one was in 2014, he's there or 2015 rather. Yeah. He's here in 2024. That is an incredible career, and it's a form of, and this should not be taken the wrong way. Like it's a form of acceptance of his role on this team, yeah. where he is just the control mage guy. Mm -hmm. He's the he's the control mage guy. Bwipo's gonna do something weird. They're gonna <laughs> pick. They're gonna pick either team fighting or lane dominant bot lanes, and then Inspire is gonna be able to dictate the flow of the game as he sees fit, but Jensen is just going to be incredibly reliable on his control mages, and he doesn't need to do Yeah, more. and you know what's funny? People thought when Azir was no longer be able to play in the playoffs, it was like, okay, well, you can, now you can just ban Orianna and you can say <laughs> good luck. But then I feel like his best pick throughout the playoffs has been his Talia. <laughs> so, yes, he can play in lane and just, like, try to basically outplay in team fights or play incredibly well as he usually does in team fights. But I've been enjoying the fact that he's constantly being able to move and, like, impact uh, Whippo's lane or jungle and work through there. His skirmishing, his team fighting has always been a, a plus one. But the question mark on his champion pool, I think, has disappeared. Yeah, I think the big thing for me with Jensen is also, like, talking to Inspired, he talked about how Jensen knows exactly what he wants from the mm -hmm. mid position, what he wants from his jungler. Yeah. And he also doesn't necessarily have to soak up a lot of resources to do what he needs to do for this team. I actually think this is a quite comfortable position for Jensen on this team, just being that solid control mage mid player. And he's also willing to branch out and play things again, like the Karma, like the Annie, so that... Inspired can play a carry jungler, or so we can play more towards a carry top side or a carry bot side. I really think he lends this team a flexibility that's underrated given how strong he is at mages. I want to go to predictions while we have five minutes until the start of show. Uh, what do you got? Oh, oh wow. Team Liquid Jet strikes again. Okay, everybody's fly I'm kind of surprised you're the only TL person. I mean, you and Miss oh. Chim Chim. Miss Chim Chim is along the side of you. So you have at least a partner. Now you got to explain yourself, Jat. I mean, it was 3-2 last time. It's not that crazy. That's not that crazy. And also, I think, again, this is something that could go either way. I do think it's a very difficult spot to be 
in the finals against a team you previously very close with where Team Liquid got to play yesterday, so they're coming in hot. Yeah. And FlyQuest is probably coming off a week of very lackluster scrims. Because I actually heard rumors that they did manage to scrim both C9 and Team Liquid, but yes. those are those are weird scrims when you know that you're going to be <laughs> yeah, playing them in the finals. So, so basically, the way that Team Liquid has been playing, I feel like they've had very good macro. I feel like their confidence is increasing. I feel like the big thing that lost them last series was APA getting picked off in side lanes too often. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to be that like reliable of a play. You can't just be like, oh yeah, the strategy is to just kill that guy in side lanes. He need to have the windows, and I think Team Liquid may have been able to improve all those things. And I actually think that they can do it. Zven, why do you think they can't? I put Flacos 3-2 because I think it's going to be a close series. I think that I wouldn't be surprised if it was TL 3-2, honestly. Mm -hmm. I think if Fly has done their homework and they get the boss situation under control, they will be stronger today than they were last time. I think that they should stop playing the funny champs. Pike was one of them. Yeah. I, I, I think Boozer can play it. He's the only one in the only one in the who can play that yeah. champion. But just why would you? <laughs> when you can win without doing it. Yeah. Why would you play things like Ash Support? It makes the game so much harder when you can win without doing these kind of things. Just drop the ego, ban things like Rel, ban things like Killstone Blue, pick Vars first pick if you can. If they ban it, good for you, right? Then mm. play something like Senna TK, Senna Nautilus, it's easy and topside will carry you. Or you will be just you know doing your part, rather making the game too hard for you, giving TL opportunities to win Balan. When comparing the two teams, I think in addition to everything Sven said about bot lane, it's also how they both do kind of want to play around their bot lanes for 5v5 fights. Yeah. And I do actually think as good as TL have improved and as good as they've looked, when you kind of have two teams like this that end up kind of wanting to play their mid game and their late game a little bit similarly, the one that is is better at that wins out. Mm. And in my mind, I do see FlyQuest as the team that's slightly better at it. Yeah. And I have a similar idea where I just think if you're the team that has the least to fix going into a best of five like this, then it is so much easier. And in this case, FlyQuest knows a lot of their focus are towards bot lane. <laughs> I love these signs. A lot of their focus is around bot lane, and I think that's just going to be easier to hit. You mentioned the pike game. I think there are a lot of things where they're just not going to be playing nearly as risky going up against this team. So I have a little bit more faith in FlyQuest for that reason. Okay, if the series breaks in a big way, because we've seen a significant number of sweeps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all think it's fairly unlikely, but if it does sweep in one way or the other, what's the most likely way that it could be a 3-0? I have my... Isn't, wasn't C9 involved in every sweep? Yes. Both sides? Yes. Yes. So, it's not so no sweep. sweep. So according to the Jet stats, <laughs> <laughs> if every sweep was a C9 That's one way or another, true. then this would mean yeah. today's yeah. going to be a five-game banger. I really hope we get the five-game banger. That These are the great. two teams that have already had the most kills in an LCS playoff series ever. Yeah. That happened 14 mm -hmm. days ago By when far. they faced each other in a previous round. And maybe they can beat that today because we know <laughs> both of them are going to want to fight. Yeah, and I think to answer your question, the X factor for me is still umpty. As a player, mm -hmm. I think generally teams that are a lot more structured, that try and play a certain type of way, uh, generally if you're like full clearing, like if, for instance, if Inspired is playing Diego and he's not as active in the map and Umpty is generally a player that would like, go top lane for a gank, try for a gank mid lane. He's just trying to get his lanes going. That is going to be a way that really messes the, the I guess the tone of the match for FlyQuest. One last thing, I think, you never know what happens when you're in LCS final with rookie mm -hmm. players. You know, you don't know how someone like Masu or Boost is going to handle it if they lose first game or two True. games, you know? Yeah. Sure, Jensen and Inspired and we've both been here before, but you don't know how they're going to react if they're down 2-0, backs against the wall, will they, will they tilt, will they you know, feel the pressure, be scared in game three? You never know, right? So it's important to talk about like how the first two games can be so important for the mental of the new players. Even Jan has never been in the final. AP has never been in the final either, right? So mm -hmm. it's very important. Really interesting dynamics with both of these teams. The experience of Impact and Core, yeah. and then the three younger players, yeah. even Umpty. And then yeah. you have the similar thing with the top side of FlyQuest and then their rookie bot lane. You can see the countdown for the MasterCard opening ceremony. FlyQuest versus Team Liquid, two teams we wouldn't have necessarily put in the finals at the start of the split, but here they are. Core JJ wants to get his first title in five years. Bwipo wants to win his first title in the LCS. So let's get to it. The opening ceremony presented by MasterCard.
Welcome to the wild, no heroes and villains. Welcome to the war, we've only begun. So pick up your weapon and face it. There's blood on the crown, go and take it. You get a one shot to make it out of the I think while the series was close, it should have been our side of close. Well, when they outnumber you, they usually play very quick, very decisive, and they play well. But once you have equal numbers... <laughs> to us, I don't think we're running at all. I think we have a solid shot of winning the entire club. They run it down so often, 5v5, it's crazy. against another NA talent who has stepped up and become liquid star player in playoffs, Masu versus Yon! And finally, the first team All-Pro making his first finals in only his third split, 
challenging the face of Team Liquid, looking for his first title since 2019. It's Bootsio versus Core JJ. Grand Finals is about to begin. FlyQuest versus Team Liquid Honda. Are you ready? I do have some history with Team Liquid. Obviously, super salty about the fact they benched me. I still am. I think the players they hired were strictly worse than me, but hey, I'll get to prove it to them now. Watch out, watch out. Ready? Go, me! I was this close to winning the championship last year. Um, this close again has been like a goal since I was younger, like 14, 15, 16. So, and since living my dream, so I don't want to like, squander that opportunity. Might just be Denzel Washington because he is equalizing Cloud9. And for the second split in a row, Team Liquid will deny Cloud9 their opportunity for international competition. And Team Liquid is going to finals and going to MSI. I would be the first time in my career that I would have won where I felt like I was a large part of that team's success. I feel really nice to be the first five players to bring the trophy to the organization for the first time. Charm for Nikki keeps it alive! God flashes backward, but the resets are pouring in! The arrow from Monsu! To be completely honest, Flyquest in our last match got lucky, so I'm happy to face them again in the finals. And Jensen, I got in his head that series. It's just gonna be a fun finals. He wants to kill off the third one. He's found the kill that he needed. Now Vulcan's gonna try to get away. Two dead on C9. Umpty and Impact are trying to make the play. Impact still looking to chase him down. A quadra kill for Umpty's Jacks. A penta kill for Umpty. That is the second jungler penta kill in LCS history. 마지막에 저희가 2대 3을 졌었는데 너무 아쉽게 져가지고 저 자리가 저희 거일 수도 있다. 라고 생각해서 좀 아쉬운데 저희가 그 자리를 다시 뺏고 싶고 일어나도록 만들겠습니다. No one ever gives him back credit for carrying his team individually, but he's always considered to be like a good player and playing well. But that said, there's a reason no one praises him for actually carrying his team, and I think this year, if he doesn't carry his team, he's not going to see that trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the LCS Finals for Spring 2024. I'm Captain Flowers, joined by Azale and Kobe, here for this showdown between Team Liquid and FlyQuest. And I know all three of us, like so many people out there, are hoping for the five-game war like we got last time. It's going to be exciting here. We set records last time these two teams played. Highest combined kills per minute ever in the LCS playoffs. And already, even the veterans, there's so much talk about the rookies on stage right now, but Core JJ, yesterday, after they beat Cloud9, he tweeted out, I want to win the LCS more than ever. And he's already won twice, he's won the World Championships, but he's here for this matchup now. Really, really wants it. Well, and I think it's so important for his legacy to be able to, you know, set him 
itself apart from those previous TL rosters. They won four times in a row, but it was so much about double lift. And now yeah. this new era has been all about core. He needs to be one of the guys to lead them to that title. And I think Core JJ has stepped up and is a big part of how Team Liquid is looking so much <laughs> more ferocious. So one thing I immediately want to talk about here is you can see the Ziggs ban in this first round of bans from FlyQuest. The last time these two teams met in that first playoff series, the two wins that Team Liquid got, both of them had APA on the Ziggs. Also important to note that in that series, Team Liquid banned out Oriana in every single game. They would not allow Jensen on the pick. They're not going to allow him on it here in game number one either. So those mid laners taken out of commission alongside the Ari, the Kalista, the Rel, the Varus, and FlyQuest will lock in the Nautilus first. Yeah, if they don't first pick that Nautilus, I was thinking it's definitely going to be snapped up there by Core JJ. Um, honestly, though, Team Liquid's bottom lane with how fearsome they've been, it really still draws so much attention to APA's champion pool. You mentioned the Ziggs ban. He he does have other champions to go for. The Talia was permabanned versus them, mm -hmm. uh, versus Cloud9. And they're actually going to lock that one in. Pairings that you automatically think of with Talia for jungle is Vi, for sure. That combo is tried and true. Yesterday, Umpty picked the Vi, and they played the combo with the Ziggs guaranteeing the Ziggs bomb ult. But if you play that with the Talia, it guarantees the seismic shove and you have a really strong at level six mid jungle. In the previous series, FlyQuest also placed a lot of priority on banning Vi and Volley Bear throughout most of those games. But this, this is one in that last series, all five games, FlyQuest banned it away because recall the regular season, it was against the double dragon comp of TL that FlyQuest lost. They did not want to play Smolder, they did not want to play against him, and now here in game number one, the fastest stacking Smolder in the LCS is piloting it again. Largely though, we haven't been seeing that much success from Smolder in playoffs. We've had a really good game here, a really good game there, but throughout most of playoffs, it has actually been falling in priority. People have really not been putting the emphasis on it, and with TL's new style where they want to scrap it every turn, this doesn't really suit that. It's so weak in the early game. And it's a calculated strategy here from FlyQuest in game number one, opening up, you're just going to give them possible scaling. Team Liquid, even when they had scaling champs, they were fighting them very, very often. And FlyQuest, they're going to be the ones with the Vi. They're going to be the ones with the Nautilus. Okay. That forces gameplay. I really like this in a game one of a best of five uh, from FlyQuest. They're the ones kind of taking a lot of the control here with their engaged champs. Not just the two engaged champs, but the AD carry that loves to fly in right alongside them. This FlyQuest team is a torpedo so far. It's only the second game here for Masu on this Kai'Sa as well, this split. You know, traditionally he's playing more Senna, Varus, longer range stuff, we're gonna sit back. You need to be aggressive, you need to be going in with that. And we've heard people talk about it, you don't know how the rookies are gonna perform in this finals with all that pressure. All right, what, we got to ban mid lane here then uh, for Team Liquid, try and ban out Jensen a little bit uh, more, protect this Talia for APA. The Orianna is always a no-brainer versus Jensen, but he's notoriously also one of the mid laners with a very shallow champion pool, consisting of very similar style champions of these mages, long range, scaling. Quay has been kind of his, his backup go-to as well, so Team Liquid are gonna get their shot as well in really whittling down that champ pool. All right, we've got the way taken off the table. That is one of those picks that Jensen can pilot in that strategy that you're talking about, the traditional mage style that he's become so adept at playing. There's the Renekton ban, so they're not going to have that safe sort of blind pick top that so many laners want to default to. Yeah, it is interesting though, because Teal is on red side, right? But that's something that Impact will go towards. You know, he's one of the players that does get some criticism on red side for not being able to use that counter pick as effectively, because yeah. you kind of know what to expect from him, and generally he's going to go towards that style of champion, regardless if it's blind or if it's kind of And if FlyQuest don't ban away the Cassante, then Impact will happily pick up a Cassante, because you're already looking at this Smolder. You just want stuff that can peel for him. Uh, Cassante definitely can do that as well, and it's so versatile for top lane. So I have to think, if you're going to ban the Renekton might as well also ban the, the Cassante there for FlyQuest. Um, that being said, fifth pick for Team Liquid. 
you were memeing on it in our opening dive live episode, but maybe Impact has got some spicy stuff stored up and they go for the Jack Span instead. Yeah, I mean, the only real kind of like actual counterpick counterpicks he's done has been the, the Ignite Rumble into the Renekton. That's been the only yeah. one that he's been kind of going towards and he yeah. did have a really good game on it yesterday. Uh, the Udyr has kind of fallen by the wayside, but that's also something that he had a lot of success with. If you're talking about late game scaling, you know, just play for that front line, protect this yawn. Um, Wukong would give them a lot more dive, but Volibear works better, I think, with the Talia, the guaranteed point and click stun, yeah. to be able to set up the seismic shove. It is pretty important to have something that can actually make that happen. And pre-6, uh, Volibear can destroy Vi. Uh, it's, it's way more difficult for Vi to be able to hit the charged up Q uh, to be able to win a duel with Volibear than it is for Volibear uh, to dodge it and to get in places where you can get stuns uh, with your E coming down as well. So probably mid, probably, yeah. We, we are going to get the lock in here for Jensen. We're, we're going down kind of the list there for those long range AP oh, major. Ergo. Okay, oh, he said, you, you got nothing. You got nothing to actually answer this pick. Th and Wimbo that was cooking up. And that's why they leave the Cassante open because Urgot Ultimate, you can just delete the Cassante. I love it from Whippo here, already throwing down and showing his creativity. Well, and Urgot was really popular for a while early on with Hullbreaker because it can actually proc with the W. The Hullbreaker procs really, really quickly. It is very difficult to beat this champion in a 1v1. Has incredibly powerful uh, level 1, but also scales really well into the game. Level okay. 13 is when people really talk about hitting those benchmarks uh, with the shotgun knees. And it is going to be the Kazante regardless. This is Wibbo throwing down the gauntlet. This is something that has happened to Impact throughout his career, where back in GP metas, people would blind pick GP into him, and he would still just go to the tank and kind of self counter pick. So we have to see, can TL win with this? Because they've kind of self counter picked on top side. They've gone towards scaling on bot side. And their whole story throughout playoffs was they're going to fight you. They're going to scrap you. I don't know if they can do it with this comp. I actually love the, the prep here from FlyQuest coming in and just saying, we know exactly what you will play, Team Liquid. If we leave up the scaling, you're going to pick up the smolder. If we leave up the Cassante, we know, in fact, you are going to pick it up, even with the pre-thrown down Urgot here for Whippo. Now it's about, can you outplay anyway? Team Liquid versus Cloud9 looks so focused on their game plan. They never wavered. I think a lot will hinge uh, on Umpty's early Volley Bear game and possibilities of pressure they can put on mid. If you have flash with Volley Bear, you can guarantee combos with the Talia play. Uh, and then if you get that lead, you get to start roaming around to the side lanes, uh, namely bottom lane, uh, especially trying to protect Smolder against dives is always your objective number one. So we'll see about the early clear from him if he does try and protect. All right, I already cannot wait to see how this plays out. The Urgot immediately challenging. It's one of those questions that always comes up around pro play. Why don't you see the solo queue answers to these matchups? Why don't you see these staples being challenged by what is supposed to be the natural counter in the executions? And Whippo says, you know what? Why not? I cannot wait to see how this lane plays. If there is a time to bring it out, to bring out what you've been cooking, it is the grand finals here. Last person to actually play Urgot before this was actually Bupo himself in the LCS back in 2022. Before that, the last person to play it was Alfari in 2021. So only person to play it in the last three years is Bupo. So talking a little bit about Urgot here, just since it's a champion that a lot of people don't see as much, I like the fact that you already touched on it a bit, Isaac, with level 13, not normally a break point for the vast majority of champions in League of Legends, but it's the level where Urgot shotgun knees hit their lowest cooldown and he truly can become a menace that will just evaporate your entire health bar very quickly. Level nine, also critically important because that's when you can get your level five purge where it becomes a toggle instead of a duration. And the only other one I see is from Cabo Shard was that one uh, a while ago where he played it into Malphite and they lost. So it's up to Whippo. Get the get the dub on the board yeah. here uh, for Urgot uh, as far as the spring games do go. I also really want to see how the level one goes because it actually has an insanely strong level one. People almost always start E and they will just walk at you through the minions. If you do not back off, if you get hit by the E, the shield is there. Plus you're getting all these passive procs with that shotgun knee. So it uh, can be very, very strong. We'll see if he's going to go for it. He is starting E. Uh, and it's going to be walking impact. Like, this is what you have to deal with. The early game is so difficult to actually fight against with this Urgot, and he's playing fleet also. And it's going to make it even harder. When you're playing a top lane pick like this, you really have to focus on jungle. They did a leash down here for Vi, 
from the bottom lane. Busio and Masu spent their time early on to get him accelerated in his clear that's going to end up on the top side of the map. <laughs> Meanwhile, they also warded both entrances from the jungle. So they're protecting against a possible Volley Bear 3 camp here. And I just think everything is targeted. These arrows all pointing up towards this top side matchup. It looks like he's gonna go for the early recall from top side for Umpty instead. That means that Vi is gonna end up there. Okay, bottom side's a little bit of a scrap early on, but nothing too crazy. Jan making sure he hits those snot bubbles with Smolder to just keep the stacks generating early on. Remember, poking the champions, especially before you have the 25 stacks for the AoE, really critical in getting that early acceleration going. Yeah, I mean, honestly, throughout lane, the entire kind of rinse and repeat is just W on cooldown, try to hit the enemy champions, use the Q general to stack unless someone walks up for a Targon so you can get a free Q on them. Um, but it is going to be the quick base for Volley as you touched on, Kobe. We've been seeing this more and more for champions with the early longsword buy. Uh, in this case, he actually gets a glowing moat and a pink ward, which is not Let exactly me tell you, the scariest of... Uh, <laughs> Let me tell you, no. glowing moats suck. They are they are one of okay. the least efficient component items in the whole game. They, they are actually quite terrible. It's barely an item. Yeah, like, that even, thing is nothing. <laughs> Even, <laughs> it's glowing at least. Uh, honestly, is though, it? It, it is it is the, the five ability haste, even though ability haste is very good for Volley Bear uh, because of the repeat oh. W. Oh. He actually went for the E nice. there, but Impact flips him back into the tower as he's e forward. That was nicely done. So forcing out that flash early from Bupo, that is a big deal uh, because a lot of times when you're looking for those all-ins post six, it is playing around your E flash on Urgot to be able to actually guarantee that, set that up. Impact's out of mana though, and both these junglers could be hovering around top side. Oh, he actually went too early. Umpty did actually juke out on the initial vision plant, but then stepped forward before it had expired. So he was spotted ever so briefly. A little bit of trading back and forth here between APA and Jensen. Both of these guys ready to try to play as aggro as they need to be. Yawn moving up here as he finds Inspired with an attempt at the Scuttle Crab, but because APA and Yawn and Core are faster to the spot, it means that Inspired has to back away. Yeah, Busio came up through River as well to try and see if they could uh, get something here. But honestly, you should just go for Krugs now since second respawns are coming in for your camps for Inspired. Uh, Krugs definitely worth more than the first Scuttle Crab. First one's not actually worth that much EXP. And then just get right back down to business on bottom side of the map. So far, Yon also stacking uh, pretty decently here in the uh, range plus melee matchup. Not too troublesome for the Smolder. Yeah, looking pretty good. And honestly, when you're playing TK and Smolder, just kind of this late game scaling, and you're trying to play for the 5v5, uh, they have held on very well so far. There's plenty of minions to farm up here as long as they get all those. They're basically going to be dead even on the farm. Uh, and it's going to be really hard to actually punish them because they are playing Exhaust and Heal. Ooh, oh, minus one. We all saw that. <laughs> minus one. It's my bad. Lucky. I said they're probably going to get them all. I apologize. <laughs> you cast a Kirsten, man. Immediately right out yep. the gate here. But we will see APA go ahead and recall. All those first recalls and the subsequent teleports are coming out. Back up in the top lane, the skill order for Whippo. This is also something I want to point out with the Urgot. Going two points in corrosive charge early. I was watching the rank one Urgot in a oh, Quanta. Were, we were just yeah. talking about this. It's so funny. Yeah, yeah, I was watching his stream the other day, and he does the same thing a lot. Going the early two points in Q for X extra lane power, extra trading potential, and then still making sure you max out your W by that level nine to have the extended fighting capability. So Whippo's done his homework on this champion. He knows what he needs to be doing to pilot this successfully. And of course, once these guys hit level six, that's where it really gets interesting. That's where the true counter pick comes into play. And look at the play here from Inspired. He just yoinks one of the grubs on the drive by on top side. You can take it so quickly and it has such big benefits, but then he still walked all the way back down here for Dragon for a contest. You've got Kaisa under tower though. Yeah, this Kaisa's is... Kaisa's not joining, then that's that's not a full commitment. Yeah, Inspired Cena, now. maybe he can turn it into a flip. Umpty's got it low, down to about 750. Busio with the dredge line onto Yon, but it ain't gonna matter. They've already claimed the Drake for the side of Team Liquid. Busio's about to drop it, it's first blood. Over to Core JJ, one nothing, TL. Blackbusters are so split there, and, and it was kind yeah. of concerning to look at because they they clearly with inspired moving down just take one grub immediately get here for the dragon contest it felt like the call was going to be a full contest but then with masu under tower and kaisa then coming from the other side of river it is very easy and especially in the early game to turn on just one side of a pincer movement and team liquid fully focused there not only the dragon but a bonus first blood you do not want to give that to the fastest team there is and that felt like one of those situations where maybe busio nerves getting to him a little bit you know hooking yeah. in there while the team is split up not really in a position to actually fight tries to flash out gives up the first blood i think you're gonna be thinking 
you lucky stars that went to core instead of actually uh, <laughs> yeah. someone else. Um, but uh, until the Tom Kench comes out, big old beefy <laughs> frog. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. He's a catfish. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, up here in this top side, Impact does not seem to be having any difficulties whatsoever into this Urgot matchup that Whippo dared him to play that Cassante into. APA now also level six on the Talia. Very curious how these Weaver's Walls are going to be spent, but inspired so close to level six on the buy. He needs one more camp to get it, hanging around the top side. And Bramble proccing on the W is actually super annoying for Urgot. It's one of the reasons that people always are going towards Thornmail and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and it, I think it's it's been changed a little bit how it works, because back in the day, people were for a little bit uh, when people would blind Urgot, they were playing Ramus into it, and the Barrel Curl would just <laughs> Uh-oh! Uh-oh! Bottom side could be some trouble here for the Smolder. Yawn's trying to get away. Busio uh, goes for the dredge line, but the flash from Yawn is well-timed, so he loses the summoner, but he keeps his life. Talia heading down here to APA. You can see Yawn was trying to bait them in as far as he can. If APA could get there, if they take a little bit more tower damage, maybe you get like a trap kill, a little uh, little cheater one, or wow, you've got your volley bear on top side of the map, but no real big overchase, uh, so no super big punishment on their side, and it's just a nice summoner spell blown. Now a smolder with no flash. Let's see if FlyQuest can actually start to deny him and make it more difficult for him to get his stacks. They've rotated him over to the mid lane now uh, since APA ended up on bottom side after the roam. And this is generally, you know, we see this rotation usually happen a little bit later. Um, usually it happens after one item when they have the Essence Reaver fully completed. Yeah. And he does have the Sheen. You know, usually on Essence Reaver, they move the, the Smolder mid and they start having him farm both the Raptors and the Wolves to really accelerate the stacks. Steel has done this very, very well. And that's one of the reasons that Yawn has, has been one of those guys to get such fast paces here for the 225. Yeah, and it's also just common sense whenever you do have some Someone who has to go base and you've got the roam down the other side you just rotate a little bit over and you kind of do the the jigsaw puzzle there and have him take the mid wave that is pushed in on his timing while apa finishes up the bottom one so remaining efficient with your minion waves uh, even under the circumstances of extra pressure. I think one of the windows they're really going to have to watch out for, though, is when Busio hits six, if Yon still does not have flash, Kor is going to have to kind of be glued to him because if he shows up in that side lane and they don't have that Tom Kench behind you and you got no flash, Nautilus ult sets it up so easily to get what is pretty much going to be a guaranteed kill. Right, you've got Nautilus ult, you've got Vi ult, and you've got Kaisa to fly in right behind them. It's so scary. Back up here on the top side, still everything just kind of going back and forth with the trading on the farm. Pretty even in terms of farm numbers across the board. Biggest difference being the mid lane as Jensen does have a couple waves lead. But Umpty is sitting on top of a ward on the blast cone. Masu and Busio are aware of the fact that Team Liquid's gonna look for this. Umpty, yeah. very scary on the volleyball. You just turn the turret off. The dives become very simple at that point. And here comes Mom. It's Yawn picking up the kill. FlyQuest knew this was coming and they still lose Busio. Yeah, another questionable call from FlyQuest. We had the earlier one between the first scrubs and the dragon uh, and the fight resulting in a kill and then this one with Team Liquid as well. When you see there's no teleport for Bwipo or for Jensen, you're not going to be able to turn around that tower dive. You mentioned it, Flowers. The most straightforward thing about Volibear, <laughs> ult turns off towers, so those dives are easy. And very clearly, they made the call to stay under the tower. Well, but Masu backed off. That's the thing that's more confusing to me is that Busio, it seemed like, just kind of made that decision himself because Masu is actually back in the pixel brush mid the middle of the lane. He wasn't going to stay there, so if he's not going to stay there, maybe Busio thought, I'm tanky enough that I can absorb the early damage, then you can come back and turn it around. But I, I think know. it was definitely a big overestimation. That, that's the positioning you take if you had solo lane teleports that had pushed up waves that are like, all right, we're going to turn this around. You bait them under the tower. Then uh, Kais is going to fly in with ultimate and we're going to teleport, but they didn't have those timers. Yeah. Right. Very, very unfortunate stuff for FlyQuest here early on. Two deaths on that Nautilus for Busio. Still not even level six, so does not have that go button we were talking about that will be important for locking down these high value targets in Yawn and APA. Second Drake of the game is going to be spawning right about now. Remember that Team Liquid got the first one, and the first trio of grubs was split with Team Liquid barely getting the edge two to one. So, so far, neutral games go in TL's way, and they have control over the bot side river for now. How, how much weight do you guys put into the concept of the lower bracket advantage and just playing a recent series where you're coming in warmed up and hot? Because Team Liquid, they feel like they're picking up exactly where they left off yesterday and, and FlyQuest a little bit slow. 
Uh, I think there's definitely something to it. You know, I guess it just depends on on how much you get from the extra practice and preparation from not having to play, you know, from being able to just kind of evaluate your opponents and look ahead. Whereas Secret TL strategies like an ergot. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, whereas, you know, TL had to be super focused on C9. That series ended up being pretty one-sided, but they can't count on that. So I think there's a little bit of give and take to it. Uh, the fact that it wasn't like a five-game battle and they're exhausted from it, I yeah. think, helps as well. All right, FlyQuest is starting up this second Drake. Team Liquid, three men waiting around in the brush, ready to challenge. A TP also summoned up. They're going to bring more yeah. reinforcements. APA is joined back up, and he'll immediately go back to the wave in mid. FlyQuest maintaining control over the Drake. Four men strong. Got it down to about 500 HP. It'll be secured by Fly, but now they gotta try to get away. Here comes the Weaver's Wall, and Busio is again the target. Impact has been brought into the fray now, and he goes in as Jensen tries to get away, but the damage just pours through, and Jan kills him with the snot. It's a 4-0 game for TL. I love this call because they commit Impact's teleport to get an extra kill, and even though an Urgot is gonna get tower plates on top side, those tower plates, they're not even done. Oh. They get an extra Extra flash. Those tower plates are answered by even more valuable ones taken by Yon. You'd rather have them on, on your smolder. So you invest that teleport, get a bunch of extra kills, get the dragon, and get the money focused where you want it. Yeah, TL, I've got to be feeling so good about how this is going. And Busio has got to be a little bit careful. You know, it is three deaths out of the four all on him. Two of them, I think, were super preventable. Maybe the dragon one, you could argue a little bit, mm. but he chose the hook in on the first dragon died. He chose the standard of the tower, died again. And you have to make sure that this is not becoming a bit of a pattern uh, because Nautilus is one of those champions where you start having a bad game, you can start having a really like bad game. And confidence, I think, is so important for a young player like that who's in this finals. I mean, let's be honest. Support is the lowest economy role, so you can end up becoming the punching bag for your opponents. But a support like Nautilus, you are meals on wheels if the team is behind. <laughs> All right, you are making sure the enemy squad is eating good. So Busio is ne seriously going to have to focus up here or he's going to end up giving more and more of this lead away to TL who are up a little bit over 1,000 gold just about as the turrets are ready to expire. Turret plates are ready to expire, excuse me. And we do have that Rift Herald getting ready to summon up here in the top side river as Umpty takes control over the Scuttlecraft. I always enjoy little things like that where Yon is actually eating along the wall and then uses the Q on the Grom for the fleet proc to get the lane that much faster. Mm -hmm. Actually allowed him to get one minion that would have died to a tower shot so it's tiny little optimizations but i always think those are fun to see yeah, oh, yeah. especially though on the support conversation that you're having flowers like when you're a nautilus and you're playing against the tom kench even more so it becomes kind of useless because usually you're an ult bot still no matter yeah. how underfed you are you can get that off but tom kench can nullify your ult and then if you hook in you you are the the thinnest pinata that there has ever been so <laughs> we'll see how much candy is inside Bucio? Not a lot when you're zero and three. The gold becomes worth less yeah, and less. Exactly. It's the cheap store brand of candy. Yeah. It's like half expired from uh, Valentine's Day. You don't Day. even really want to eat it. Yeah, you're kind of like, uh, maybe. Maybe it's three o'clock in the morning. You wake up and you'll, you'll, snacks, you'll take it if it's snacks, free. Those, yeah, exactly. You'll, you'll take, take it if it's free. free. So bucio has got to make sure he's not giving TL any more of these free angles. It's two minutes until the next Drake is alive. You can see up in the top lane, Impact has his Thorn Mail and his Plated Steel Caps mm -hmm. complete. It's uh, not super fun to be Urgot in that situation. No, the W kind of just hurts yourself uh, <laughs> at, a, at a certain point, but he does have a Black Cleaver completed over on the other side. Did get some plates. Oh, Weaver's Wall coming in. And with Umpty right there, Jensen flash is forced so now that karma extra vulnerable that's still going to be down with plenty of time to spare for this upcoming drake fight or if they decide to fight for the herald soon either yeah flyquests are going to have to track umpty now you, you have to keep vision on volley bear if, if volley bear has flash and, and karma does not that is an easy easy kill you flash in with your q your e comes down on top that burst damage with the hot. talia combo is 100 percent dead and they're look, at least looking to threaten that. MT was kind of moving down towards bot side with APA. So I think they want to try to make them nervous, see if they can get them back off. But Yana's has passed 125 stacks, and Masu and Busio have not seen Volibear since they saw him walk down towards bot, so they are backing off that. But the stacking really starts to accelerate as you get that splash yep, damage oh, as well. There's not even a flash required. They just immediately go for the Wombo on Jensen. Inspire tries to turn it around, but there ain't no damage. APA escapes, and both top laners are ready to join the scrap. Inspired going to get juggled around here next. There goes another rock. There goes a double kill for APA. Busio tries to hook somebody in, but FlyQuest is already down two men. Team Liquid, six 
Strikes to nothing in game number one. TL are locked in. They are so focused. As soon as they get that flash, they're thinking, we've got the repeat play. This karma is already dead on my screen. All we need is Umpty to come in. Umpty didn't even have to flash to get that Q stun play we were talking about. He was able to just walk by because they had the control wards through River. They put in the earlier work. TL riding the momentum of yesterday. Umpty is gapping inspired in game number one. One zero and five on the Volley Bear versus a zero one and zero on this Vi that has not been able to find any plays to make for FlyQuest. It's a 3,000 gold lead now. Herald in pocket for Umpty for TL. And man, when, I, when I'm looking at the scoreboard and then I press tab and I see that there's a smolder on the other team, like that makes me feel terrible when you're this behind early and Jensen likely to die again. Yeah, Umpty just jumps at him here with a sky splitter. APA can set up the easy knockback with a seismic shove. Inspire tries to jump in and kill off the Talia, but it ain't gonna work. APA goes on a killing spree and Jensen drops. Yon's picking up the next one. There goes Inspire. Here's your loot pinata from Bucio. It's three dead for FlyQuest. Team Liquid is making this look so easy. Seraph's shield into Tom Kench ultimate shield. You thought you might have been kind of close. Not even close at all. TL here running away with this one. And the only surprising thing is I had my, my all chat oh. open. <laughs> oh, they're going to look bot though. APA trying to look for a play, but we'll see if Whippo can sidestep. Yep. Whippo just stepping forward to avoid the knockback of the seismic shove and the stun onto the unraveled earth. Impact and APA will not secure the kill on the Urgot there. I was going to say the only surprising thing is that we haven't had any all chat yet. And then APA is like, <laughs> I got you, bro. Don't worry. We are so far ahead right now. He's he's letting it fly. And I don't think there's going to be any rebuttal from the yeah, side of FlyQuest Yappa. right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love how his name has become Yappa. Yappa is just, actually it's incredible perfect. Incredible It's really name. good. It's really good. And yeah. he's just living up to it, man. He's ready to type at all times. Yeah. Rift Herald summoned up in the mid lane. I don't believe the charge will do enough to kill the turret but directly. It'll toast. need a little bit more, but there's game plenty of firepower here. There it is. Sky Splitter from Umpty just doing the work to zone away the rest of FlyQuest. Whippo and Inspired are going to try to make a move on Impact here on the bottom side, but Impact goes all out. He's looking to try to deal with Whippo here. He wants to get away. Inspired chasing after it's a full-on team fight. There comes your suppression. Whippo's grabbing the first kill, but Umpty's killed Inspired back in a trade. It'll be a one for one here with a start. Team Liquid still looking to see if they can find any more, and that potential seismic shove forces the flash out of Masu. The only the only benefit here for FlyQuest is that since they're so far behind, they have objective bounties up, and Jensen did get the top side objective bounty on the tower, but your whole base is still getting destroyed here. Yeah. TL are steamrolling through your territory. Look at the jungle lit up with wards now as well. They can get their reset up. Never mind. Umpty's even looking aggressive again. There's no flash on Masu. And when Smolder gets ahead, you just get even more ahead because you're buying all that early CDR. They're going to look for the fight. They're just immediately looking to burst Bucio instead, but now Umpty's got to be careful because Whipple's ready to chase him down. Core JJ keeps him alive with oh. Devour, and now the Abyssal died to go after the isolated Ergon. Whipple's going to be focused, going to be exploded, I would have to assume. One Last hit from Yawn, and the man is gone. Team Liquid, 11 to 1. Core JJ makes it look so easy. He goes Tom Kench ultimate into Tongue Lash hit into confirming the Abyssal Voyage. Actually, such a clean Tom Kench here for DL. And when you've got that big of a lead with the safety of Core JJ. Tom Kench, the warm embrace, you know, nobody's going down. <laughs> I mean, he has just been right place, right time. He has had so many good ults on CD. It feels like wow. this game, he finds someone who's getting picked. He saves them with the ulti. Umpty has maintained 100% KP as well throughout this game. He has been everywhere. And Yon is just scaling to infinity for free, working towards the rapid fire already at 20 minutes here. He's at 180 stacks. This game is looking so this is hard for FlyQuest. They're I'm actually, blasted. I'm actually shocked that we're having this after uh, the first series that we saw between these two teams in playoffs. But Team Liquid have completely hulked out. Yeah, and it's not just the first series that these two teams had in playoffs. It's the last time we saw FlyQuest. They were putting together some of the most incredible team fighting that we've seen in the LCS in a long time. And in this game, they haven't even had a chance to really team fight because they've just been lost from the get-go. Ever since that first death back around the Drake, it just feels like Team Liquid knows exactly what they want to do at all times, what every man's role is. And FlyQuest is stumbling around in the dark. I'm all aboard the lower bracket advantage now. Okay, <laughs> you're convinced? I'm like, that, that is some real, real power up here for Team Liquid. And you already mentioned it multiple times. Oh, 
Uh, fancy that they have a smolder in their back pocket as well. Not only do you have this massive gold lead, uh, plus the extra dragon, but uh, you even have the third dragon here. Uh, give, it, give it two minutes, probably. Uh -huh. he's, he's yeah. yeah, he's 197 right yep. now. So. Already working on the rapid fire, so... Yeah, and that's, that's where when you have three items and you have the 225, I mean, he has his three items. It's going to be online so early because of all this extra gold that he's gotten. Um, T looking for Bwipo, but Busio and Inspired are playing behind him. Uh, Whippo, one of the only people who's kind of at parity, at least, with their lane opponent, it feels yeah. like right now. And he does have those two items completed. Uh, he went towards, you know, a bit of a tankier build here with that Steric second. If they can make something happen around him, maybe get an initial burst kill, be able to pull them in, find that big fear on multiple people with that ulti, maybe they can make something happen. All right, fight starting out as Whippo's the first target. The seismic shove right back into the unraveled earth, but now Busio's going for the dredge line. Whippo barely getting away for now. They shoot out the harpoon, but they are going to find the fear beyond death just yet. It's fire charging into the back, looking for Yama, the angle to grab him, Yama goes unstoppable, and now Whipple's about to drop too. Impact is fearless on the front line, as Busio and Matsu head for the hills, but the Weaver's wall is ready to ride, and Busio is gone again. A double kill back to Impact. Team Liquid, don't lose a single man. What is happening? 14 to one for TL. They are stopping fly. And now Core JJ forces out another flash. Jensen without that summoner spell, there's no way for him and Masu to try to challenge for this Baron. It's Team Liquid completely running the show start to finish in game number one, 23 minutes in, and they're going to claim a Baron. So I was going to be like, oh my god, their team fighting is so insane because it was actually really clean how they used their resets there with Core JJ eating Umpty. Umpty saved his Volley Bear ult to kite backwards over the Vi, but they're so far ahead also that it's just a massive sweep. So look at the, the cooldown usage here. They actually save Umpty's ultimate and relying on Core JJ so they can make use of this Tom Kench big shield while Impact is on Jensen on the other side. And then when Inspired goes for the dive, Umpty ults back defensively. They separate while Impact Impact goes for the kill in here, and he's going to be able to dash back to the rest of the squad who already finished off Inspired, too. It's just, it, if they were not as far ahead, I would be popping off way more about how clean it was. But uh, even with that, it's like, T Team Liquid, they are smashing them. Spawn's not even reacting. Unfazed. No. He's unfazed. He's like, yeah, we should have won that team fight because we're so far ahead, but they also did it cleanly. I mean, you just have to love, you know, his desire to They're always look for what they can improve for the next fight. <laughs> All right, now now it's like getting kind of like mean. Usually, <laughs> usually when APA is trash talking, like sometimes they're even behind, right? Yeah. And he just makes a good play. But when you are clobbering like this, you're like, okay. Are you saying he's, he's too good to be trash talking like yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. This, you guys are stopping them a little hard right now to be uh, be back in all chat. Yaps in America. <laughs> okay, that one's even better than Yappa. Yaps in America. I like the, America, and I like the, the original. The team but... Liquid Avengers, man. They are just oh. clobbered yeah. on this game. <laughs> Impact versus Whippo. Impact hits a side. He wants the fight. Whippo trying to get away back over the wall there with a flash, but Team Liquid brought more firepower. Yawn is dominating. He's at that break point. 240 stacks. 5v4 for TL for the next 40 seconds. Impact heard Whippo talking trash before the series. <laughs> he'll take the tank into your counter pick and he'll beat you anyway. Up to coming in here. The engage from the Volley Bear is there again. Yawn is godlike. Team Liquid looking to end this one right now. Busio drops next, a triple kill for the Smolder. Tail is on his time, Song is on his ride. Look at that, man. Smolder just runs him down once he's got that break point. Now, Team Liquid, with nobody to oppose him, goes straight for the Nexus turrets, straight for the Nexus right after. 19 to 1, 11,000 gold ahead. Team Liquid slaughters FlyQuest in game one. 25 and a half minute game with Smolder <laughs> on your squad. Get the sacks, the game ended. Check yeah. out. Get, get the sacks, game ended. Biggest takeaways though, we need to go back in time and look at the beginning of this game because there were yes. a couple of choices that we mentioned in quick succession that came from FlyQuest that are very questionable and gave over a lot of early momentum to Team Liquid. And with this version of Team Liquid that is so hungry at playing early and always sets their sights on the next objective and the next play, you cannot make two big errors in the early game because this is the clear result.
Absolutely stunning performance here from TL. Like you said earlier, Isaac, they are picking up exactly where they left off from yesterday. This team has just completely transformed in playoffs. They're so coordinated, they're so aggressive, and they're so fun to watch. I mean, they've, they've just been looking really strong. TL has completely leveled up from the regular season. They look like an absolutely different squad altogether. But we also have to talk about the FlyQuest side. Busio obviously had, had a couple shocking deaths early on. You know, he is a young guy in this big performance. He's got to be able to reset the mental, shrug it off, say, all right, it's just one game. We had a bad one. Let's yeah. go back to it. Let's play better in game two. Let's avoid those mistakes because you can't allow this series to get away from you. TL are just looking too on point. They're going to punish you. Yeah, I mean, the whole team does, honestly. Yep. Uh, because a lot of the a lot of the mistakes, especially in the early game, like the Dragon disconnect uh, on the, the call for the team fight there. Uh, I mean, everybody's got to step back up. Yeah, everybody on TL played really well, but honestly, my biggest props go to Umpty. It just felt like he was everywhere. I'm so proud. Once. His first Volley Bear in playoffs was really terrible. I'm so <laughs> proud of him. I, I actually, this little is bear is all grown up. <laughs> number one Volley Bear fan <laughs> in a over here. But we're going to head on back to the LCS Lounge to break it down for game one. <laughs> Thank you. I love this idea that Kobe, just because he's such a ball bear enjoyer, is like sitting there taking notes on every LCS ball bear. Uh, but aside from that, yes. TL stop. Yep. Not what we expected, I think. No. It's pretty insane, too, because like for me, at from what I've seen, all split, what we've talked about all split long, is FlyQuest in team fights being incredibly dominant uh always looking for skirmishes and like the last series we saw from team liquid was literally that the bloodiest series that we've had in the lcs and all that but that we, we didn't even see a fight from flyquest yeah i think they definitely kind of draft themselves into a trap here they're yeah. picking a full go in and dive comp against the team comp that does the exact opposite teal has full disengage tanks and one time can jolt save them from violty yeah and it just feels like flyquest if they can't stomp lanes they can't win this game, but they only have winning lanes. So what are they supposed to do? Yeah. Nothing, what? I guess. <laughs> That's what happened. What? <laughs> nothing. nothing going there. Nothing. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, we were we were kind of looking through tape as it was happening. We we're like, okay, well, what happened here? Like, how did they give up Drake? Oh, it was just off of reset. Yeah, they And just not having lane. pushing lanes. Oh, okay. Um, one thing I think I'd want to call out is the bands went as you expected, Sven, right? You, yeah. you were like, oh, okay. Fly have done their homework. They know exactly how they're going to ban against TL on blue side. But then the Senna didn't come through. We saw the Kaisa come through. Yeah. Would that be something that you would like to see changed going forward for FlyQuest? Yeah, I really like that Fly banned the rail. It's a good place for TL. And then they banned one of the AD carries, Vars and Callista. And TL answered with the other one, which is perfect for TL. I mean, yes. FlyQuest, sorry. Because mm -hmm. then they can first pick, you know, either the Senna lane or whatever they prefer, Smolder. I don't care. But then they go with Nautilus. Their points pick Smolder. And you don't go Senna. Even though Senna Nautilus will beat any lane with Smolder, no matter what Core J picks. Mm -hmm. So you have at least one lane of Pryo on blue side, which is good, because if Bot loses lane and top line picks top, then you're going to lose two lanes at least. And mm -hmm. Jensen will come play a control match anyway, so you have like so little pressure in the game if you don't pick at least one lane that wins. And when your opponent's picking Smolder, you can't be losing lane Smolder. Mm -hmm. It's just not legal to lose lane Smolder, right? Yes. <laughs> and Kai Nautilus doesn't win lane against Set, I mean, TK Smolder, it doesn't outscale. And isn't even stronger at like level six. Yeah. So at what point is Kaisa actually good unless your team comp is stomping the other team? But your top man is blind picking. And Myth playing control mage in four or five after there's already been like a couple bans towards him. They ban his way, ban Orianna. How are TL supposed to like lose this game? They can't lose. It really did feel like they had a set idea how what comp they wanted to play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because Especially when they went for the Nautilus pick away from Team Liquid. Mm -hmm. And then you see the blind pick Urgot that comes through on the second <laughs> half. Yeah, I respect mean, that. Yeah, I like the composition. Like, just in a vacuum. In yes. a vacuum. Yes. The composition makes sense. But they just did not do something that they have been the strongest at in this league yeah. for the entire uh, regular season, which is, like, adapting to what the enemy team is drafting. Yeah. It's like, look at what TL picked first three. Smolder, Vi, I mean, Smolder, Time Kench. Antalya. Antalya, yeah. Antalya. Mm -hmm. It's all champs that disengage, they play slow, they scale, and they are really good against engage. Anti-engage, anti right? Yeah. What does Flyco pick? Full engage. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> on, on top of that, you also lose lane while you're losing the team fight and the team comp game. So, and Flyco, I mean, Teal knows about Inspired's, you know, game. I saw APA talking about it in the old chat that Inspired is a silent merchant. Yeah. He goes silent and doesn't work, so they know about it now. Yeah. 
I think the biggest thing also for me was Umti being able to recognize where yeah. he could take advantage, right? Like, again, there was that window where they get first Drake off of reset and then uh, FlyQuest actually engage into them and, and TL wins that fight, right? So um, I think it was also going back to a matchup we talked about a lot going into this, Inspired being able to recognize where he can apply pressure. He didn't have a lot of opportunities to do that because like you said, not a lot of his lanes had pressure going into this. Um, that is unfortunately all the time we have. We'll be back to talk about draft on the other side, but for right now, we're gonna send it over to Jat for a giveaway. Thanks, Emily. I got two fans here that are going to be playing to win a Samsung SSD 990 Pro hard drive. But first, we're going to send it to break. Up next is going to be Team Liquid and FlyQuest Game 2. I mean, you don't need to promo, okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to watch this. Oh. I'm climbing top two. I'm climbing top two. Oh. Can't be good. I think he's dead, no? Can't be good. Yeah. I'm climbing top. Just kidding. He said, he said. I did not show up. I'm here, 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 Make sure they more. Bye, 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 in the Kia Sportage Turbo Hybrid. Kia, movement that inspires. Look what I've just made. The perfect pearl. Not too bad, but check this out. <sighs> Whoa, a true Venus clam. Red Bull gives you wings. The new Red Bull Sea Blue Edition with the taste of Juneberry. Wings for every taste. Hey, welcome back. We got Steven and Chris here to play some trivia. Winner gets this Samsung SSD. All right, first question, you guys. We're going to start with Steven for his answer, and we'll alternate from there. So who won the most player of the games this split? A, JoJo. B, Bwipo, C, Impact, or D, Quid? Quid. Quid. All right, you both get it. We might have to do a tiebreaker, but I'm just going to give you both a point for that one. Congratulations on the first question. Second question we got, heading into finals weekend, which team has the most LCS wins of all time? So this is regular season included. Who just has the most wins? 100 Thieves, C9, TSM, or Team Liquid? Liquid. TSM. I see the liquid hoodie. You're both wrong. It's C9. They didn't win yesterday, so I can see they lost their last six. They would have been an even uh, bigger, a bigger lead. Okay, third question. Heading into finals weekend, what champion has been banned the most this split? Callista, Vi, Lucian, or Nar? Callista. 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 Okay, double Callista. You're both right. 61 bans. Bonus question for the win. Heading into finals weekend, which champion has only ever been played once in the LCS? Ramis, Timo, Zach, or Skarner? Timo. So we have Timo. Ramis. Ramis is the correct answer. Congratulations on the SSD. And also, hold, hold up the SSD. One terabyte, 990 Pro SSD, but also for the correct answer, you're both gonna win an SSD. Uh, so congratulations for playing you guys. Right after this, we're gonna be having game two of FlyQuest and Team Liquid. Check it out. Thanks guys.